Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Bob Bentley. I'm Director of Product Marketing here at WSO2. And we're very excited to tell you about Identity Manager 6.0, which is our newest version of our uh, IAM product, as well as a new product called Private Siam Cloud with B2B Siam. And I'm joined by Ashara, who's our Head of Engineering. Uh, Ashara, do you want to introduce yourself very quickly? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Ishara Kandaratnu. I am the head of engineering in identity and access management BU in WSO2. Yes. Great. And Ishara is going to be uh, talking about the technical stuff. I'm going to be talking about more of the over, overall announcement and some of the other topics around that. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we recognize that your time is very valuable. So, what we're going to cover today in 45 minutes or less is talking both about Identity Server 6.0 and also our new private Siam cloud. We're gonna cover the main features and benefits, how it works, why you should care, when it's gonna be available, all those important facts. Uh, we're also gonna answer some questions that we feel like you're probably gonna be thinking, uh, which we have some prepared, but also we're very open to, um, of course, you asking any questions you want. And this is all gonna happen in 45 minutes or less. We recognize your time is valuable. <clears throat> but in case anyone needs to leave before the end, uh, we want to point out that the next steps that we'd love to have you do are to try out our private Siam cloud in a free sandbox environment that we offer. Uh, that's available from our website. Or you can download and check out Identity Server 6, as you have with other IAM, our other Identity Server versions in the past. And we'll have more details about that, those two things at the end. Uh, but we wanted to point that out to you, as that's, that's what we hope you'll do after learning about our new products. So... <clears throat> Uh, let's get right to the basic facts of why, what, when, and why. So what are we offering? When will it be available? And why should you care? So two major uh, different areas here. One's Identity Server 6. Uh, what it is is a major update to Identity Server. Uh, a follow-on from our 5, five series, or the last major version of our product. Uh, it's available right now, both as open source, but also as executable binary that you can get from WSO2. And why you should care, it's uh, in addition to, of course, you know, doing the regular routine maintenance and bug fixes and things like that, we're also delivering some key features that have been demanded by you, our customers, for some time. <clears throat> we're also going to be adding some important enhancements that uh, we think are really going to add value to what you're doing. So we'll cover all those things in just a moment. The other part of what we're going to be talking about today is private Siam Cloud. And what this is, is a managed hosted instance of Identity Server 6.0 uh, with some additional features around B2B Siam. And uh, I'll, I'll discuss what that means in just a moment for anybody who may not be familiar with that. Uh, but it's, a, uh, it's available now. And uh, why you should care about this is because as a managed and hosted instance that's completely um, managed by WSO2, <clears throat> it's very easy to get started. It offloads the infrastructure requirement uh, from people using it, so you don't have to provide your own infrastructure or manage it. And it's also the vehicle through which we're going to be delivering our new B2B Siam capabilities, which are which are really exciting. They're market leading, the best in the market available today. So, with that brief introduction, let me talk about B2B Siam just to give you a little bit of background uh, for what we mean when we say that. So I think everyone knows that um, organizations need to have an online presence today in order to be relevant in the market. This is website, this is mobile apps, uh, kiosk, could even be customer service, uh, help desk kind of thing. Uh, this is your face to the customer, your digital face to the customer, and it really helps people to, really helps organizations to be able to communicate with their customers, engage with them. It lets you set your brand, define it how you want. Uh, enables you to differentiate from competition, um, give you more touch mark, customer touch points, and, and so on. And all of these features, these, these capabilities are made possible because of customer identity access management. And this is the technology that allows organizations to, allows, allows users or, or customers to be able to have a, a painless, secure, frictionless, enjoyable experience when you're, when they're interacting with your digital assets. So, what I've described here, mostly, I think most people are familiar with what we call a B2C model or business to consumer. It's really where you have just a straight model where the, the organization has customers and they just simply create a, 
a, a, digital, a digital interface for them to be able to communicate. The reason why we're now talking about B2B SIAM as opposed to B2C <clears throat> is that organizations now are starting to do business differently. We've been getting a lot of requests from customers who uh, do things differently than just the straight traditional business to consumer model that we've been referring to. And in fact, uh, we know that many, many customers, uh, we believe that there's uh, hundreds of, of you out there right now that are using our technology for, for B2B purposes, not just B2C. So what is it they're doing differently? Well, here's an example. Um, that's tr the traditional or most common form of B2B um, uh, SIAM or, or business model is that organizations don't do businesses directly with their own, with customers. They actually do business with other businesses. So in this case, you can see we've got a made up company here called Medverse. Uh, let's say this company has um, services that they offer, like for example, scheduling ambulances or um, organizing uh, scheduling ambulances. Let's use that example. In that case, they sell those services to different hospitals, like Hospital A and Hospital B, that they then in turn offer to their their constituents, whether those are patients, employees, contractors, faculty, students, whatever, that the actual customers of these companies are owned by Hospital A and Hospital B. So that's the traditional or, or most, um, it's the most simple model of B2B. There's another model that uh, is sort of a variation that's called B2B to C. And this is where it's business to business to consumer. And in this case, um, organizations serve their own customers, but they do so through independent partners or other businesses. So in this case, we've got this company, this fake company called Food on Wheels, uh, very similar to Uber Eats or DoorDash or something like that, um, where this, com this company actually has their own consumers and their own delivery agents and other types of end users, but they go to business through restaurants, in this case, that actually you know, create the product that they're going to sell. So this is a different model, similar, but, but slightly different. <clears throat> then there may also be other combinations of these that could be actually as many as you can imagine, because there's so many, there's, you know, no business is quite exactly the same as the others. Uh, in this model, for example, there may be an organization that has their own direct customers, but also goes to market through franchises or other businesses. <clears throat> so in this case, it's kind of a mixture or hybrid model. And the, the point of all these is to say that it's no longer just a simple B2C, simple model like that. And, um, and it's been very difficult for many organizations as they try to solve this problem of providing good uh, customer IAM services through, through, through these different types of going to business, going, going, to, uh, going to market. So that's where we think we can really help out. <clears throat> so the reason why um, we're talking about this today is because SIAM, the, the basic features and capabilities of SIAM are just as important when you're talking about a B2B model as they always have been for a B2C. And so, for example, if you look down the left side of the screen here, these are some of the benefits that you get from SIAM. <clears throat> and, and it doesn't matter whether you're talking B2C or B2B. So most important probably is a low friction user experience because we know that end user customers will quickly leave your website or your app if it's too hard to navigate, it's too hard to, to log in and to find what you want, things like that. So having low friction user experience is super important. Also, of course, security, you know, that matches both the security needs and policies of your own company, but it also makes the customer feel secure and safe in doing business with you. Um, keeping their information private, developing the trust that it takes to be able to, um, to maintain a customer relationship and really enabling the organization to create a differentiating and engaging environment uh, to, through, through their customers through these different digital properties that they have. These are all the types of goals that organizations have when they use SIAM. And like I said, it's exactly the same situation when you go to a B2B model as it is for B2C. So I hope that's a good brief introduction to B2B SIAM. And uh, what I'd like to do now is is uh, turn the time over to Ishara to talk about how does WSO2 approach this B2B SIAM issue and what do we offer that makes our solution the best in the market? Ishara. Okay, thanks, Bob. So let me take you through the key capabilities in WSO2 B2B SIAM offering and then what are the differences 
we have introduced uh, into this domain. The, the, in, in the previous slide, Bob explained about the typical B2B organization models and the hybrid or mixed model. So basically, B2B and B2B2C are the two main established models in uh, B2B SIAM uh, platforms. So B2B means uh, first organization delivers services to the second organization. The second organization directly involved with the end customer. So the second organization will deliver a B2C solution to their customers. And the other model is B2B2C where the first organization will partnership ships or uh, build some connection with other organizations to deliver product or services to the, the initial organization's customers. So those are the two typical models available in uh, B2B CIM, in, uh, CIM domain. But when it comes to the uh, real world implementations, real world requirements, we have to extend these capabilities. For example, if we take that Medverse uh, use case. So initially Medverse is a B2B organization implementation where uh, Medverse healthcare solution uh, is provided to different hospitals. The hospital A and the hospital B using Medverse capabilities to deliver their services to their users, the patients, the medical staff and so on. But let's assume uh, there's a new hospital called Hospital C. They will use the initial capabilities to deliver their services to their users. But later, Hospital C want to expand their business. They want to uh, build a hospital chain and they want to uh, build partnership with other hospitals and deliver broader service to the, uh, to the healthcare industry and, and the larger customer base. In that case, on top of the, the B2B capabilities that Medverse already provide, Hospital C want B2B to B2C to capability. So then again, Medverse has to implement both B2B capabilities and B2B to B2C capabilities in the single solution. So that's where this our, our combined approach comes. So most of the uh, organizations, even though if they start with the B2B or B2B to B2B2C B2B to in their mind, if they want to grow their business, they have to uh, leverage all the other capabilities and they have to build their own organization hierarchies to deliver their unique business. So if you use the WSO2 B2B SIAM capabilities, we have flexibility to build your own organization hierarchy in a simple manner without adding customization to the core offering. So that is the main uh, feature available in WSO2 B2B SIAM offering. Then again, the organization administrators, they don't want to go each and every organization and do their administrative operations. They want to delegate that capability. So each organization, they can bring their own organization administrator and admin, they can operate their organization the way they want but still the, the top level organization may want to enforce, enforce their the policies to the other organization, even that is possible with this implementation. And again, the sub organizations, they may have different authentication requirements. They may be using different authentication mechanisms within their organization. So suddenly they can't move into a, another foreign uh, authentication enforcement. So they, still want to continue with their, the, the way they use authentication, the way they enforce the authentication. Maybe they want to bring their own identity provider into their organization. So all these capabilities are added into the WSO2 B2B SIAM capabilities. So those are the three uh, main key capabilities available in WSO2 uh, B2B SIAM offering. Thanks. Thanks, Ashara. I should have mentioned before we started talking about this that um, <clears throat> uh, the term in the market that's typically used to describe this capability is called organization management. So there's, yes. you know, and the problem is that the, the key focus area is if you're the if you're the host organization 
how do you bring other organizations on board? You know, how do you make it map to the way you do business? How do you make it, how do you distribute the load of um, administration to all the other, to the downstream organizations, the tenants? And how do you adapt um, the access management environment, the policies, the processes, the workflows, all those kinds of things to match what each one of those tenants wants, right? So with um, with WSO2, as Ashara mentioned, we, we have fantastic capability to address each one of these three things. So with that, um, since we're talking about B2B and um, that's where we're, we're gonna offer that through our private Siam cloud. So Ishara, would you please walk us through sort of what, what users can expect, what, are, what our customers can expect when they take a look at our private Siam cloud? What is it? What does it offer? Why is it interesting to them? Yes, uh, with WS2 Prime Siam Cloud, they will get a separate uh, deployment. So this is not shared with other subscription. They will get a private deployment, and these deployments are done with security considerations. All the you know, the privacy and data sovereignty uh, requirements are catered with these deployments. And again, these uh, deployments are hosted on. Uh, Asia infrastructure. So all the security, scalability, high availability features available in Asia platform is inherited to this private SIME cloud. And this private SIME cloud is fully operated and maintained by the WSO2 team. So you will get a 24X support and then they will do all the, the maintenance and those things. So you should not worry about any infrastructure related stuff. So you can continue with the innovate, innovation the development activities, and the WSO2 team will look after all the other aspects. So you will get a true SaaS experience with WSO2 private SIME cloud. In simply, if you want B2B uh, SIME capabilities, you should move to the WSO2 B2B SIME capabilities. And again, if you prefer minimal responsibilities for infrastructure and maintenance, if you want your data separated and you should require control or where your physical data is located, then the best place is WSO2 uh, SIAM cloud offering. All right, thanks Ishar for that quick summary on that. <clears throat> Let's now talk about Identity Server 6.0, which is uh, of course the main, the main uh, update of our IAM solution. So please, please walk us through uh, what's new here. Yes, uh, WSO2 uh, 6.0 is the new addition to the identity server family. So it is not only contain the new features, it contains all the, the security enhancement and, and, and bug fixes and the other feature improvements too. So let me go through the, the new feature additions. With identity server 6.0, we have introduced the uh, ELF-based uh, analytics uh, solution. So there uh, you can get, uh, you can monitor session and login related analytics. Apart from that, uh, there's a dashboard for the security alerts, uh, such as suspicious login alerts. You can see those things available. In, in addition to the ELK, you can integrate uh, any other analytic solution as well, uh, using the events that WSO2 Identity Server publishes. And typing DNA is a behavioral biometric uh, authentication mechanism. So you can integrate with typing DNA uh, to get uh, risk-based authentication capabilities into the WSO2 identity server. You know, when we are, when we are using the second factor authentication, it improves the security in our authentication process, but it lacks with the, the experience, the user experience. So if you're using the uh, SMS OTP as a second factor authentication, once you do the, the, the username and password based authentication, next you have to find your mobile phone and read the SMS and get the OTP. That is not user convenient in the old time. So the type in DNA, uh, it uh, remembers your typing patterns, how you type your, your password. In the next authentication attempts that verify your password, the, the password typing pattern with your initial typing pattern. If it is not matching, then there's a risk, then uh, WSO2 identity server can easily enforce another factor authentication that improves the user experience in the authentication process. 
magic link is a password less authentication mechanism you know password if you using a, a simple password it's very easy to break and if it is a complex password it's very hard for you to remember so people moving away from the passwords due to these limitations and they prefer the password less authentication magic link is a password less authentication mechanism when you try to log into application it will send you a link to your registered email address you can just click on that link and log into your application so magic link is a really good alternative to fido 2.0 based password less authentication auth2 device flow is a new ad, uh, addition to the auth2.0 framework which can be used for the user constrained devices such as such as smart tv so with uh, this capability is available in identity server you can expand your digital devices in your uh, cima uh, digital ecosystem and federated oidc back channel uh, logout is another specification uh, in the o- open id connect uh, platform so with this capability the identity provider uh, get the capability to initiate a back channel logout and again you know wso2 identity server is a is always focusing on the developers and how we improve their experience with identity server 6.0 we are releasing set of authentication sdks based on open id connect protocol so you can easily integrate this sdks when you are developing your application so no need to worry about the uh, worry about handling the authentication protocols you can just uh, add the sdk and add the configuration you will just connect into the identity server and and we will continue uh, our sdks in future you can see more and more uh, authentication sdks to improve your application development experience so these are the the key main features that we added into the identity server 6 All right. Thanks, Ashara. <clears throat> so with that, I think we're at this point now where we want to touch on some questions that uh, we think you're probably wondering. So we put a few questions up here. Uh, we also welcome any additional questions through the chat um, that we can we can uh, respond to at the end. Uh, but Ashara, would you please walk us through some of these important questions? Because I'm sure many of the attendees today are thinking about these things yeah definitely let me take you this initial question so as i said later we can uh, answer to the additional questions too so the first question is what is the future of uh, identity server i think this is a really good question so since we have different uh, offerings uh, it's a common question people ask what is the future future of identity server so you know at the moment we have three main offerings wso2 identity server Ascardo, which is a uh, IDAS, and we have the WSO2 private Siemi cloud. So all these three offerings are built on top of co uh, co I I identity server capabilities, and these are targeting different audience. So even in the future, this co and uh, all three offerings will grow in the same direction. So each offering will complement other, and. another thing is in the identity server there would be identity server 6.1 release in the uh, first half of the 2023 and the second question how does private siemi cloud compare with ascardi so both private siemi cloud and ascardi are subscription based services you can subscribe to either private siemi cloud uh, or ascardi at the moment uh, only the productized uh, b2b siem capabilities available in private siem cloud uh, in q3 at the end of q3 these capabilities will be available in ascardi but if you want more extensibility and and customizable requirements then uh, you'd better move to the private siem cloud that capabilities is available more in private siem cloud so if i go to the next question can identity server 6 be used for b2b siem capability yes you can use identity server 6 to uh, build your own uh, b2b siem capabilities but the productized private siem capabilities only available in private siem cloud so uh, using 
WS Rident Server Tenancy and the uh, group control mechanisms, you can implement your own uh, B2B capabilities. But if you have a complex requirement, and, and if you want, if you don't want to spend time on uh, customizing and managing those things, I think it, it's better to move into the private CIMA cloud. So all the feature, features available in private CIMA cloud and the maintenance overhead also done by the WSO2 team. Yes, if you have any additional questions, we can uh, answer. Yeah, so please, uh, th thanks, Ishara, for touching on those three questions there. And um, as we said, if you have more questions, put them in the chat, and we'll get to those in a moment. Uh, but just before we finish here, <clears throat> we wanted to also remind you of um, follow-up actions and next steps that we'd like you to take. Um, so first, very important, is we are, we're offering a free 30-day sandbox trial for our private Cyan cloud. And so we would love for you to... Um, to give, get in contact with us, to have us uh, set up a sandbox for you and let you explore, let you play with it, let you do whatever you want. Um, we are happy to uh, to make that happen for you. And it's, as I said, it's free and uh, very easy. Of course, also you can always just download Identity Server 6. We have it in different forms. Um, the open source code you can get from WSO2 or from other popular repositories like GitHub. Uh, we also have pre-compiled executable binaries from that you can get straight from WSO2, which of course lets you skip the the uh, the build and compile process and let you just get started. And uh, of course, if you have any other questions that you've thought of after this meeting, um, after this webinar, that uh, you, you know we'd love to hear from you one way or the other. Just give us a con, you know, give us a call, send us a message through our website, whatever works. Um, we're happy to talk to you. So uh, with that. Um, We'll switch off this uh, part of the part of the webinar and uh, switch over to questions. So thanks, thanks, Ashara, for um, Thank for you. sharing sure. sharing with me tonight, and um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much.